Now we're going to head over to the press room of MCM's London Comic Con 2019 to hear the voice actors of My Hero Academia and Attack on Titan. Are you enjoying yourselves at Comic Con? What do you guys love about events like this? Yes. Go for it. Recall. Oh man! Yeah, sorry. That was incredible. I wish you guys had a camera that could see all their beautiful faces all like just ladder out. Who's gonna talk first? Yeah. Well, let me say hi. I'm Rico Fajardo, by the way. Uh, I've been having a great time here at MCM London Comic Con. It's my first time in London. Uh, so uh, your breakfast, by the way, superior to America. And mm. I've, I've been in, in America my whole life, so <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've been around. You talking um, the traditional English breakfast? Did you have that? Did you I have just the, had the regular the breakfast the that was in the hotel. And yep. then yeah, the side note. Anyway, I'll put a put a pin in that because we, <laughs> we need to talk about that later about where to go. But <laughs> right. yes, having a great time here uh, at the Comic Con. What a lovely venue, and everyone's been really sweet and super uh, uh, energetic. Learning about the cues. It's a cue. It's not a line. That's correct. Different, different. Just mm -hmm. turn, you know, words. <laughs> Learning <laughs> words is good. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the fans have been super hype uh, for My Hero Academia, the new season coming up. Um, and it's just really nice to go to a, a, another country and meet fans who are just as hype as my American comrades, uh, just with a, a slight accent. And that's all it is. This is different. It's like, are you ready for season four? Yeah. I'm like, yes, I'm ready for season four. Rico, according to them, we have the accent, though. Yeah, we all have accents. Yeah, I'm just accents saying. are sexy. That's what I meant. <laughs> accents are sexy. <laughs> but yes. Oh, here we go. Hashtag not all. Hashtag, 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 Hashtag not all. Yeah. I don't know Sarah. if any of us even need to speak after that. I mean, that was yeah, like such a thorough. Oh, the accomplished our reactions, I think. Rico, it is nice to, to get a, a ticket overseas and see a new place, a new country, it's awesome. And to, uh, and to realize that you're appreciated yeah. wherever that may be. Yeah. In this case, in Definitely. London. So I'll add, cheers to that. I love any, uh, any judgment-free uh, zone for a bunch of nerds to get together. That mm. warms my heart. Well put, mm -hmm. my friend. Definitely. Love geeking yeah. out with others. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I would also say that um, in my experience, uh, the fans here are a lot more polite <laughs> <laughs> yes. More respectful than back home. <laughs> Londoners are so polite. Yeah. yeah. So we appreciate that. I guess mm. all the else, you know, our American counterpart, you know, counterparts are, are just very boisterous. What would you call? It? Like, I'm trying to sure, think of. Yeah, yeah. Polite. Because not impolite. They're just like, hey. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody here's energetic. been very considerate. Yeah. yeah. I'll put it that mm. way. Yeah. We love you at home. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, we're right. not saying no, anything not, negative. They're all right. Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> they are. You guys are great. You guys are just <laughs> Is there any um, live action TV shows that you think would work or be a really interesting anime kind of oh. style? Hmm. That's like a good question. Or... That is a good question. They've done a bunch of intros. They did the Game of Thrones intro in anime style. That was slick. They did a mm. uh, Batman uh, anime style. That was mm. rad. Batman went back in like huh. time and he was all like Bushido. Wolverine yeah. too. He spent the time in Japan. Yeah. 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 That's a, tasty, a good question. Yeah, that's a tasty yeah. question. I've, I've thought of that in reverse mm. before, but never really that direction. You mm. know what? This isn't exactly answering your question, but I want to see Neil Gaiman's Sandman made into an anime. Good. And I want to voice Ooh. Delirium. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I mean, they keep talking about how they're going to make a movie series or TV series out of it, and that just keeps on not happening. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> do it animated. It'll happen faster. <laughs> I feel like watching like Breaking Bad. <laughs> Breaking anime Bad, ride. the anime. Like something straight up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you guys yeah, don't mean like that would be like Yeah, really, that would be pretty really cool. Yeah, with like the intense that. scenes, like you know, the medium shots of just like, you know, Cranston like, just yes. anime Cranston. I feel like Stranger Things could work as Ooh. an anime. Oh, Easily. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was I mean, gosh, we could let our Ooh. imaginations roar on that. <laughs> yeah. Good question. If you could pick one quirk for yourself in real life, which would you be taking? <laughs> Does that have to be from the show or can it just be like a any kind of I, I mean, you know, if you want to go a la carte, you want to invent a quirk, then go for it. All right. Well, I said this earlier, so I'm going to be a repetition, re re repeating Ralph. Um, <laughs> I uh, want incredible luck, like stupid luck. Uh, there's a Marvel character named Longshot who comes from uh, not well known, but I had his trading card as a kid. I'm like, he's the best luck. He literally, people try to kill him and he just like falls out of the way, things occur. He's like, man, I really need some money right now, a bag of money disappears. He's like, 
That's kind of rad. <laughs> Gambit's a little like this too, though, isn't he? Is yeah. Gambit, da- isn't Gambit he sort of. Gambit yeah. has the kinetic energy, but mm. I'm, I'm going to say that's my quirk. I'm a, What's the just, girl from the new... Luck. <laughs> Domino. Uh, yeah, ah, Domino. Domino. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, so quirks. I think the thing that would help me the most in my actual life would be not needing any sleep. <gasps> not oh. requiring sleep. It's just about wow. game breaking. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. I would get so much done. <laughs> I know, you get so much done. Hey, I'd be so productive. Oh, uh, I, I wanna make people smell whatever I want them to. <laughs> Take that how you will. <laughs> Villain. Are you, gonna come, up, are, you, are you gonna come up with a new one or are you? Oh no, I'm on that. I'm okay. on board. Uh, I feel like I wanna be able to like um, hop back in time five seconds. Uh, oh. Because I feel oh, like yeah. too much more than that and you get into some really dangerous right. like butterfly effect, paradoxical, whatever, whatever's time continuums. But five seconds, five seconds is doable. Yeah. I would have a lot less sports. bruises and <laughs> scraped shins. <laughs> yeah, I'm not afraid of that. I want, the, I, want the, I want teleportation with a little time travel thrown in. <laughs> uh, and and I'll go back further. I mean, and I have been, I have metal in my body and fake lens. I mean, I'm, I'm a cyborg. So if I could avoid that, I might not. Anyway. Gosh. That's that's the quirk. To you guys, what do you think the big appeal of the show is? It has so much heart. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things that I love about it. You know, it's like not only is it beautiful animation, delightful casting um, and <laughs> characters, but uh, I mean, it's a really touching show, mm-hmm. I find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which... I love anime with no substance uh, that are just pretty <laughs> pictures and great action sequences as well. Um, but to have like a really great story and compelling characters, I mean, I think it hits every single nail on the head and hits it really well. I wasn't sure about it at first. Uh, I have watched a lot of anime and I'm like, all right, this is coming to Funimation, what is this? And I watched the first episode, I'm like, okay, heroes, got it. A lot of hero stuff happening, right? <laughs> MCU is <laughs> like 10 year long run. I mean, Game of Thrones just finished. A lot of, they're not heroes, but you know what I mean. Long no running. Spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers, <laughs> everyone dies. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, after watching the second episode, I'm, I'm very into symbolism and, and kind of character analysis as well. And watching, uh, Every uh, in classic anime style, right? The school of misfits and everyone's got different abilities. I love the idea of superpowers and the idea, at least the way I view it, like as a metaphor for what makes people special, their quirk, calling it a quirk is a really specific word. Yeah. And I love that because some people have really awesome quirks and some people have not so awesome quirks. And yet it's, it's you know, uh, emblematic or, or very, very close to how I think personally how people are in life. and. We travel through our lives and some of us are good at some things and others aren't so good, but we can all work on what makes us special. Um, Not that that's too kind of like soft hearted, but really like (laughs) I love the show because there are people that can just straight up like, I can fill this coffee cup with my quirk and that's what they do. And it's humble and it's sweet, but then all of a sudden that character can become something, can, can literally become a hero and save the day in episode. And I think our viewers will see something like that and go, I've, I'm that. Yeah. I've done that for someone. And so mm-hmm. even being a hero, you know. Yeah. On Anyone who level. can consistently fill a coffee cup is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the show just has uh, so many really great characters, and they're all unique, and there's something different about each one that makes them so special and lovable. Even the villains. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, for sure. And, you know, yeah. without the villains, would they really be heroes? Well, like, what's kind of. Yeah. Anyway. Oh man, I want to philosophize. Like, like, what being a hero is, yeah. Yeah. I date. Like, Bakugo is Bakugo really? Because I keep thinking he could switch over to our team very easily, and Cliff really insists that is not even possible. (laughs) That's like, man, but you you seem pretty irritated all the time, like more than my dude does. He's actually soft, you know, like he's like a porcupine. Right, right. On the inside, right. Once you get (laughs) to the gooey center. He's actually like, okay, if he could wrench my my old ball, it'd be (laughs) I think he would love this characterization. Yes, characterization is a gooey porcupine, guys. What if he said? For sure. Yeah, even his hair is like it, so. But something to be said about the villains, but really like they all have body. It's not, it's not, um, where they're just pin- pigeonholed as like, you know. They're not caricatures. A, the reason no, right? the reason that they are villains, like they're heroes in their own mind, I think, you know? Yeah. And they, they also have an ensemble of friends and comrades that believe a thing, uh, not to, I don't it's know how to get It's a little it. more effed up, I think. I mean, a little more, <laughs> but like, ah, it's hard to not talk about the story because I don't know who's gonna watch this, but anyway, like with Stain and everything, like some people are like, yes, that guy. And the people that rally behind this one character, villains and heroes alike, you're like, whoa, whoa, who's this dude who's like, 
drawing this very specific group of people. And then, of course, All Might, who's like, ah, yes, ah, you know, I am here. And you're like, oh, yeah, that. I want to be like that. And, of course, that draws its own crowd. I've never played a villain with, you know, massive facial scarring that uh, is a bad guy that fans have reacted so positively yeah. to. It's so strange. <laughs> and, Dobby's and, or even sexy. think that he's like really sexy and I'm like, this man has scars all over him. But <laughs> but you're into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you great, great, great. And honestly, I think I've only seen one male cosplayer of Dobby. I've seen tons of female really? cosplayers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's cool. something to be... Mm, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen no male midnight cosplayers. <laughs> I, have, I have not either. <laughs> that will be a brave, brave individual. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> The new season coming up. I'm curious, just overall, sort of tonally, because you know each season kind of brings something new, takes in different directions. What can fans overall expect from season four? Yeah, you just have to keep it vague, like it's really funny. vague. This is like, <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for shows like Game of Thrones and the MC universe to teach us how to not say spoilers, but talk right. about everything around <laughs> yeah. it. Like, I don't I think, think it teaches everyone. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I went through my news feed the day after and. Immediately, just a headline. I'm like, great. Oh, thank you, thank you so uh, much. Yeah. There's well, a giant detail I now know. Uh, anyway, uh, so no. do it, but keep it. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm thinking about it. Aaron, <laughs> I think can you open up for us? Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's little small morals that come up in each season, um, and I think maybe the one that's coming up is going to be something along the lines of like, uh, it's not what like what you're given. It's like what you make of what you have. Um, I think we're going to get a lot more of that sort of idea coming up. That's I'm, pretty big. That's but, but, big, but please. concise. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I meant that as a compliment. I, yeah. I hope that was understood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a cute little bow. Appreciate um, it. Well, um, with the anime being such a success in Japan, um, is there anything like really challenging or really daunting about encapsulating these quite large characters in a new way? And if there is, what's the scariest thing about that? No fear. No fear. Super excited. Yeah. Mm. Like to me personally, it's a delight to get a chance to hear, you know, our, our Japanese counterparts. Mm like give it their heart and how inspiring and it felt, you know, you get jazzed, man, when you see someone swinging yeah. for the fences when it comes to a scene, but no, no intimidation. Just it's us getting to take a crack. It's like, you know, play, like, you know, you get to do it again just because you know what happens at Romeo and Juliet die in the end, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but truly it's the playing of it. And so what a delight that we get the opportunity to do that. See, yeah, I keep it a then, mystery when I record. I, I, I don't like to, you don't, I don't like to know what, what's going to happen. You don't know when Dobby dies? I honestly, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> joking. Making jokes. <laughs> wow. Not Sorry, funny. bro. Wow. Totally joking. Not funny. <laughs> you actually, you got me. No, <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, he's acting. I die all the time. In, uh, oh, right. So I, yeah. No, no, no. Not just that. I mean, literally, last year on television, I died in every show that was shot within the central. Texas corridor that you know every network television show Can we except montage the one. It? I want to montage it and the other one <laughs> that didn't get uh, that I didn't die and got canceled. So, oh um, man! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'm I'm good at this. Maybe this is a problem. Maybe this this is not something I should cultivate. Is that the Sean the Sean Bean effect? <laughs> I don't know. He he does it well too, doesn't he? That's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah. There's a no market for that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll add to um, what you're asking about that, um, yeah, when we are when we have an opportunity to work on a show that has had such popularity in Japan and, you know, we already know that going into it, yeah, like the main, the main feeling is like, oh, this is so exciting, like what an honor to be able to work on this. But I definitely feel a little bit of... It, you know, it's hard to ignore the fact that there is a certain expectation and, and you know, you don't want to disappoint anybody and you want to do the character justice and, you know, because mm -hmm. people are really looking forward to hearing, you know, what your performance is for a particular character, um, especially if they already really love that character and they may already have an idea in their head of how that character is supposed to sound mm -hmm. and how that character should be portrayed. And so I definitely, I feel that with, with uh, certain characters and definitely with my hero going into that, I... You know, I wanted to make sure that I was really bringing my very, very best. So it's it's a it's a good amount of pressure. It's not it's not like anxiety or anything, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> yeah, just enough to make you really give your best. Do you have any routine, like daily routines, before you go in to not shoot but record? And like technically, in comparison to like emotionally as an actor. Yeah, I think we talked about this earlier. We had a question. That we, we did. Just, we all the have panel. our own little personal yeah. routines. Uh, but I like to sing, specifically Sam Smith songs, because he's ridiculously high range. And I, you know, I just sing songs that, like, you know, Michael Jackson things. I'm like, ah! 
<laughs> go up there and go all up and down the range. Uh, you know, the scale um, as loud and proud as I can in my car in the shower. Um, and yeah, I drink a lot of water. I mean, that's the morning routine, though. I get up at 6 a.m. and I'm like annoying my neighbors and, you know, roommates and stuff, uh, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway. I've yet to hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's my personal kind of routine. I'll try to do like you know, yoga, hit the gym, try to get frosty before if it's a big scene or I know it's a yelling thing. But the difficulty I would say, and I'll toss this to my comrades, is that oftentimes we don't know with simul dub and things what's coming. So yeah. we could get ready to walk into a scene that's going to be full of yelling. And I just did my normal, okay, let's go. It's like, all right, Rico, you're going to be yelling for two hours straight because you're in a fight. And I'm like, oh, man. All right, well, here we go. You know? Um, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I go in to record all the time, and I have no idea until I step into the booth what I'm recording for. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they do not tell you in advance. <laughs> so um, it's kind of just getting into the mindset of I'm ready for anything. You know, throw me what you got, and um, I'll work with it. Um, and then, you know, there are certain things that, you know, like singing in the car, like you were saying, that will help with whatever it is you're going to be doing, as long as it's voiceover, um, staying hydrated. Um, I was talking about earlier how I have to consciously remind myself to drink water before a recording session because I generally am kind of bad about staying hydrated, <laughs> which is very important when it comes to doing voiceover, obviously. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Um, yeah, so uh, I try to drink a lot before a session. Um, yeah, singing in the car along with the radio. <laughs> Yes, I think that's probably going to be most of our answers is singing yeah. or doing some kind of like your typical vocal exercises that you learned in choir, basically. Right, right, <laughs> like exactly. Going up the scale and up and down. Just getting and warmed a, up. Just, a yeah. couple of us are based in mm -hmm. Austin, and uh, most of the recording happens in Flower Mound, which is about, oh, three to three and a half hours, depending on traffic. So um, getting frosty like you do at the gym, uh, yoga, all that, that's not really possible. It's, a, <laughs> it's mainly about trying not to be, for me anyway, trying not to be, I don't know, to, to have that weird vacant road worn feeling. Um, <laughs> luckily with this particular show, my guy is a man of few words. He doesn't raise his voice. He's super chill. Um, I do have stuff that's higher energy that it's more difficult to get into, but this one in particular, it's relatively easy to kind of just fall into whatever happens. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not going to be yelling. Whatever it is. Anyway. Oh, so cool. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, yeah. too. I actually feel like once I started doing voice acting for a living, it actually changed, like, my personal life a little bit more because it becomes not just about, like, uh, prepping for, like, oh, I have one session later in the week that I need to be, you know, on point for. It's, like, it becomes an everyday thing. And, and you really have to, like, protect your instrument. So I find I don't see live music as much anymore yeah. <laughs> because mm -hmm. trying to like talk above the concert noise can wreck you for a session mm -hmm. the next day yeah that's so true or um i didn't think about that or like if you go on a roller coaster don't scream yeah. when you're on it <laughs> <laughs> i'll actually yeah. try to stack that's sessions alarming. to use the sessions like from one particular um show like where i know i'm if i've got something that's particularly deep and gravelly i'll try to put that at the end of the week yeah, yeah. and that way i get through all this other stuff and it actually kind of warms me up and preps right. me and like hurts my voice a little bit to the point, and this is probably not the way to do it safely, <laughs> but hurts me to the point that I can get into that deep gravelly thing by the end of the week, and it's much more naturally there for me. <laughs> and then, you know, it gradually goes away over the course of the weekend, yeah. if you're lucky. Yeah. Sometimes you just if, I like the tag on if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta be lucky. Yeah. yeah, if I'm voicing a, a boy character, um, it's very helpful if I happen to have a sore throat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's or what I'm talking about. Or if you just wake up oh, my natural morning, That's what I mean. <laughs> Liz. Yeah. yeah. There, aside from making yourselves ill, um, you put such a beautiful <laughs> bow before on um, season four with talking about how it's about, you know, the, the moral being it's kind of being grateful for what you have. Hmm. I think it'd be really interesting to hear from each of you what you're most grateful about with your character, what it is that you find most interesting or fun about. Oh, man. I've So I've read ahead. Um, I legitimately get emotional about it, and I'm so I'm, and it's so it's so uh, cliche to say that, especially <laughs> being an actor. But you guys know how it is when there's something really special to you, and you read about it, and you identify with a character. It's I think it's um, when I got cast as my character, uh, his name's Mirio in My Hero Academia. Uh, Colleen was like, "Oh, it's just you," <laughs> and. Uh, I thought that was just the, just the most lovely praise I could ever mm -hmm. receive from someone. Yeah. Yeah. It was really great. I just, 
I, it's hard. I, you can't. I can't talk about because it it's that character. You gotta. You gotta discover him. But it's a journey, man. And I like resonate. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, and you're an actor, and you get a role that like you don't have to work for. Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh, I. This is just. I know exactly who. I this know exactly is. where this is. I don't have to go practice anything. It is in the pocket, and I'm ready to go. Mm. Colleen was like, yeah, let's just make our job easy and just cast you as this. And I was like, wow, you think that of me? That's beautiful. I, I'm so humbled at that. Um, because it's a wonderful journey that, that the character goes through, so. I don't know what my journey holds as Davi, but I definitely feel like I can identify with his scars. Like, and not his mm. external scars, his internal scars. Like, anyway, for what it's worth. Yeah. yeah. I feel, I, I identify with him. It's good writing, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good writing. Like, you know, I don't know. You guys feel it? You can tell. <laughs> when you act it, I don't know, any actors who are watching this at some point, or like, I guess, even if you're just a... a, a, a purveyor, a patron of, <laughs> of art, and you, 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 when the thing resonates with you, um, it's when you close the book, you know, you, you read that chapter of Game of Thrones, you're like, ah, and you're upset for several days because, you know, the thing happened. Um, it, it, gets, it gets in your skin, I think, for all the right reasons, you know? Anyway, I, I, it's hard to not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and on, on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, I usually end up playing characters that are very dark and dramatic, and it's actually been really lovely to like play a character in My Hero Academia that I feel like adds levity yeah. and like humor to the kind of intense, dark situations. So she's been really fun to play with in that respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, along the same lines, yeah, for my character, she's very lighthearted and kind of like jovial and very, very talkative and just curious and, you know, wants to know everything about everyone around her and always happy-go-lucky and, I mean, how is that not fun to play? That's, you know, characters like that are always so fun to play and um, especially when they have a really big heart, which I think she does, so... Uh, I think what I like about Tamaki is, and this is based more on reading ahead, like uh, Rico did, uh, he's got an accurate like, gauge on his own strengths and weaknesses, which I think is like a really underrated thing to have. Like He knows what fights he can take. Uh, he knows like public speaking is not his game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, I, I really value that, and it's something that I, I like to think I have in myself, and like being cast as someone who's like, you plus like part of your super ego is always, as Rico was saying, it's really, really flattering. Yeah. Nah, no. And <laughs> so yeah, I don't really know what uh, what Pony has in store yet. <laughs> but, she's cute. But she's, she's cute. So cute. And uh, the, the few times that I've seen her, she, uh, Austin's character seems to be like whispering things in her ear and telling her what she should say to the other class. Like they seem to be like harassing <laughs> the others. She's the only so American, right? She, yeah, she's American, yeah, and she, she's, the only she's American. like, okay, I'll say this thing. Why are they acting like that? <laughs> I don't know. She's really cute though. Phone. Like I get that in like some parts too, where I'm like. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, it's like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to see the maturation of all the characters. Yeah, you know, see not that I don't have. know. If there's like a time skip coming or something. You know what I mean? Like how it happens. I don't know. I don't know. How we far, don't know. How far have you read all of it? I've read as far as it can be read. Yeah, <laughs> as far as you can read. I'm, I'm like on top of I'm it. Curious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I can go the distance. Um, for me, and I, I know. Well, you were just saying this, right, Jason? About um. You don't like to know what's coming, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, it's not that I. I just find that, that I react more more honestly, more yeah. more naturally. I'm the same if it way. kind of unfolds in front same. of me. Yeah. Um, I there, feel like my performance is them. more organic if I don't know what's coming because my character doesn't know what's coming, um, and so I, yeah, that's. I also that's get those Todoroki questions all the freaking time, and I can honestly say that I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, that is a, uh, that's a great answer. The burden of knowledge. <laughs> uh, I'm not allowed to say if I did know, so <laughs> I can honestly answer that I do not know. I know nothing. Right. I, I'd say I have uh, theatrical came, came up theatrically, and so rehearsal, not to be afraid of rehearsal and not to be afraid of, like, the no, you know, foreknowledge. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I like to meditate and ponder on all the different things that could possibly be, and then mm. it's just acting. And acting, good acting is truth, it's reality, in, in my opinion. So don't get me wrong, it's lovely to be like, holy crap, uh, my lover dies in this scene? And then, yeah, it's there in the moment, and you have that authentic breath, but I can act that. Um, 
with specificity, I think, as well. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's yeah, just absolutely. my... Yeah, absolutely. They're all... Yeah, all, yeah, no. All roads totally. lead to the thing, but yeah. for me, I'm like, I, I'm, plus I want to know what happens next. <laughs> like, I'm, that, I'm that fan also that's like, what? Tell me. I mean, I want to know. <laughs> and I get what you're saying about in the theatrical realm. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, I mean, you rehearse things unless it's completely improvised. Which I was allergic to, by the way. Really? I hated rehearsal. I did not <laughs> like rehearsing. I'm like, can we do the thing? Can we, like, do this full out? I would get upset. But in grad school, it was like just... Just bleed it out until the thing is pulp, and then it just it just is. And I was like, oh wow, that's a hard lesson to learn over. You know, so I come me. from a company we'd make yeah. our own work, so we've literally there's one piece in particular that we worked on. We workshop for nine years. Oh, I mean, we Woo. performed it in, in all its iterations. Yes, but nine years, literally. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, you want to be involved in another play? I'm like, I, I don't have that much life. <laughs> you just I, feel your beard. I'm too old. Grow I'm already like, check out the grade. Like, I'm, I can't do it again. <laughs> Um, but with, with, with the anime, with the voiceover, I feel like more that I can allow it to unfold. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. And especially yeah. with this particular character. Although I am exceptionally curious myself. I mean, I've gotten that question so many times. <laughs> and I want to I wanna ask you, when we leave here, I want to be like, all right, what I want, happens? I want what is it? I want to tell you. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I respect it. Tell Love me, it. though. Tell me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> if you want to see more from MCM London Comic Con 2019, you can check out our 360 walkthrough or check out the videos for cosplay or some of the guest interviews. You can click on the links below. Alternatively, please like and subscribe.